الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الله وبحمده عدد قلبه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد رب الشرق لي صدري ويسد لي أملي وحل الأقضاء من لساني يبقوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا ويلكم to Heart Talk Alhamdulillah we are coming closer to the end of this module um, and we just have two more sessions left uh, we, I have some homework uh, that I would want you to do that I will discuss in a while but before that coming back to what we were doing in the last class we were talking about uh, the malice of negative thinking and one of the accessories of it was riba that is backbiting and we discussed on uh, how we can avoid it what are the things we can do how we can use um, a filter use the heart make the heart the filter of the tongue think before we speak and we also talked about the levels where we can protect ourselves imagine the person sitting in front of us saying something that the person would want to hear or uh, if you know the best and the people of excellence would say what you would like them to hear. So continuing that, we come to uh, being aware of the fact that the Prophet Wasallam said, do you know what, uh, what backbiting is? The listener said, Allah and his messenger knows the best. He said, saying something about your brother and obviously that means sister also, that he dislikes. So saying something about someone that they dislike, and but what if it is true? The Sahaba asked, right? So if it is true what you said, and if they dislike it, it is still backbiting. But then if it is not true, then it becomes even a worse and a bigger sin that means you have slandered that person. So when people say, oh, I would say it to her face, but this is the truth. And I'm not scared to say this in front of her. So all these things are come, they all come under backbiting. The person who spreads calumnies will never enter paradise, will never enter Jannah. So the Prophet said, do you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do you know what calumny is? Sahaba said, no, Allah and his Rasul and the messenger know best. He said, telling people what other people have said in order to create dissension between them. That means you hear something and to add spice to the conversation, you go and say, oh, do you know so-and-so? Yeah, she just mentioned uh, this and this about you. Uh, I wasn't there, but I just heard it. Or maybe I heard it from my own eyes. Or sorry, I heard it from my own ears. Or so I saw it with my own eyes. So to say something like that, just to create uh, dissension, an argument, ill feelings among two people is a calumny. And uh, this is also a very, this is something very disliked. Two companions they criticized a man who had been punished for committing zina. Ab dekha jaya to zina is kabira guna. It is a huge sin. So these men were actually, I mean, if you just look at it, if you criticize something, if someone is, uh, has committed zina, you obviously think it bad in your heart and you would say, ke galat ka. So they criticized that man for committing adultery. The Prophet ﷺ was traveling and he passed by a dead carcass of a donkey. And he said that, where are those two people? Get down and eat the flesh of this donkey. They said, oh, Rasulullah, who would eat this? Then Rasulullah ﷺ said, what the two of you have done, defaming the honor of your brother, is far worse than eating this. And this is Sunan Abi Dao 4428, those who want a reference. So, I mean, this is something food for thought. Kisi ne koi bura kaam kiya? The worst of the worst. 
you think it bad you mention it to your friend or cousin or sister or someone that you know someone did this and that's a horrible act to do i would allah maaf kare this is you know something kisi ko nahi karna chahiye you wouldn't think that that comes under riba or backbiting but this is like eating the flesh of a of, of a dead donkey so that's how bad it is saying on their faces do you think if you tell someone oh my god uh, i just heard you committed adultery and that's the worst thing do you know how bad that is so how do you think that person is going to feel good no so that comes under what if it's true i'm saying if it's true sometimes no but i'm saying what does it come under i we just discussed it if you are saying something something which is true about someone then on their face and if they don't like it what is it what you and ab ye exam mein ab test mein ab to hoga nahi but if it's a test what does it come under is it riba is it um uh, is it slander or is it telling the truth what is it if you go to someone and said oh you know i heard that uh, you've been blamed of committing adultery and uh, you know blah 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 and how bad is that you know like this and that and don't you think it's such a bad sin yes it's backbiting because you are telling them something they have done which they already know about and there are rumors about it everywhere and then you're telling them that people are talking about it and i'm just telling you so are they going to like this fact no you're just hurting them what is your intention actually you just enjoy the fact that you know in the story but in the theory you realize you have a lot of kaam kar rahe ho to usme kya hoga i'm curious to be wrong but is there a pata ho ya nahi pata ho right now what is tarz ki about about you about you you are not supposed to uh just go to people and uh, you know point out their bad things to them which do you think that they will not like if you have an understanding where the other person would really thank you for it and you know be uh, overly i mean you know appreciating then you can do that but generally if you have a feeling that the person is not going to take this nicely but mai khwai khair khwai karti hu so there is a very fine line thin line between that for being a student for myself and for you right now is that we don't want to go into different fix and scenarios right now we just want to keep it very very simple and the simple thing is that we don't go up to people and we don't tell them things that are bad about them to their face because that will hurt them or we go to some third person and tell them that uh, you know this so and so did this yeah, i thought if, if you are getting to third person to so so like fighting over the other half then you are hurting the person then you are then you are just hurting the person ye bura hai bura that's a negative thought that you have had in your heart and for that negative thought it has now come on to your tongue and now you have ended up hurting your sister or friend because you thought it and uh, uh, if we, we i mean we talking about allah you really don't know the incident of if you do you know that the sahaba were also involved in this do you think that they did it out of bad intentions no they act everyone actually thought uh, maybe it was true there was always a maybe to it and there is always a maybe because if you have no witnesses these are all rumors and now we could wait for our wait for us Yeah, well that is a different thing and always stick to always stick to uh, the fact that if your suggestion is regarding worship for example if someone is reading namaz for example very quickly right and if you tell them that you know thair thair ke padhni chahiye if you have that understanding now that's a different thing rather than saying you know i think ke you need some surgery because your nose is too fat there is a difference between the two right so we need to draw the line on uh, what are we saying because remember that at the day of qiyama there will be some people who will be muflis and the sahaba asked that who is a muflis um they probably thought there was somebody who would be poor bankrupt so these are the people who had slandered others they had cursed others they had backbitten others 
and they had said bad things about others and at the day of resurrection then they will have to give their good deeds to that person and if they don't have enough good deeds then they will take over the bad bad deeds of that person right so and at the night of miraj rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw people with nails of copper scratching their faces and their breasts he asked angel jibril who are these people so it was said that these are those that backbited and criticized people's honor so make sure that whenever you are criticizing what is your niyyah number 1 and try and not to destroy the honor the self esteem the self worth of the person that you are talking to so think like i said don't just talk we have to think before we are saying we have to process the information on what we are going to say and how are we going to say it if you really want to do good for the other person otherwise it usually backfires right so i hope uh, that makes sense yes simon i want to ask you you know that everything is true but it is not just more true and you there you are hearing the woman about your friend and she is a very close friend and you have a soft corner also and you want her to know that you know this humor is going around so you better do something about it or you want to go out here because people are calling me because you know even my mother got a call regarding someone so personal i am telling you and my mother also got a call you know your daughter's friend this 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 humor etc for example you know people call and ask like that so my mother said that no i have no idea then she asked me and i was like no i also have no idea then i asked her you know okay i know it's not true but you should do something about it and why people are talking like this so ye kis ka karein mera ye to aapki niyat to achhi hai na because she is a very dear friend and i don't want people to talk bad about her okay so what simul is saying that if you hear a gossip do you go ahead and tell the person about that gossip what is wrong with this whole story there is something wrong with the whole story delhi Listening, gossip, gossip. Close, so, listening. Listening. If someone comes up to you and talks to you about so and so, uh, is what I will come to that, and then see if you can, if we can solve this issue after what we have, what we will discuss today in class, right? So I hope these are these are here in explaining to us what is backbiting, what is slander. what is the difference and why is it uh, going to be uh, you know why is there severe punishment regarding it right so we need to be aware of these so the next slide is um social media gossip okay social media gossip is uh, when those who love to see indecency spread among the believers um they do they will suffer a painful punishment in this life and the hereafter and allah knows and you do not know and this is from surah nur obviously related to uh, what we were talking about now namima namima is a word that is used that means spreading the latest gossip does that uh, resonate with what what we were just discussing namima is spreading the latest gossip you hear a gossip and you just want to go and tell maybe other people that this is a gossip but hey it's not true i don't think it's true but you're still spreading the gossip or you're saying there are many ways that oh have you heard so and so what do you think about that so there are different ways when you enjoy reading other people's comments to malign their reputation because you have an issue with that person does other person know about this no but allah says that allah knows and you do not know so allah knows what is in the hearts you speak ill of another person on social media that's another way of spreading namima number 3 uh, uh is that when you harbor negative thoughts about someone who has posted something you don't like and for that reason you are not talking to them now and this happens a lot you don't want to talk to them you hold a grudge and this impacts your um relationship with the person so if you are hearing gossip and spreading it that this comes under this namina namima um a question ye hai ki phir what does one do 
before we talk about what does one do, usually people get stuck into all these talks that I've had. I notice that people usually go into exceptions first. They're always thinking about what if, what if. So this time I'm going to talk about the exceptions first and everything after these exceptions falls under treatment. There is no other, generally should not be any other exception other than what uh, broadly falls into this category. Number one, complain about an oppressor to a person who can control the oppressor to elevate yourself or others from suffering. That means that number one, if someone is being oppressed, family relationship or work or uh, generally in society, ho, who should you go and complain to is the person in charge who can elevate you from this misery. Now, that could be a senior in the company, for example, a senior in the family. Um, maybe it could be a judge when it comes to court and law or maybe any other authority who has the power to elevate the oppression, right? If you are randomly just ranting about what goes on, will not rid you of your problem, right? It's just one thing adding on to another. And then we have, you want someone about potential harm, okay? Um, example, such and such is spreading lies. Now, this is not lies about you generally. This could be maybe a gang of, uh, for example, people who cheat people. They pose themselves as maids and they ransom homes and they, you know, rob, they do robbery. So about such people, you need to warn people and you can post pictures. And this is to this is for the protection of society and people. So this is allowed. This is an exception to the rule where you are warning people against potential harm. Um, so, so and so is a thief, so guard yourself, right? Um, and then you describe how you have been wronged because you seek help to remove an evil or, or to right a wrong. Now, if you see oppression or if you see how someone is being wrong, then you, um, then you seek help to remove it. You are solution oriented. You are not adding to the problem. You're not going ahead and telling 10 people about it who can't do anything about it, who will add 10 things and then spread it to 10 more people and make a huge ruckus about it without actually solving the problem. Because we want to be solution oriented, not problem oriented. And this is generally what people do. We have a problem. We go and tell every friend, every person about that problem and there is no solution to it. And the problem becomes in your own mind so big that it becomes your belief system. So we want to avoid this. And our main aim is to remove that evil or that negative thought or that oppression or whatever it is that is disturbing that person. Number three, a believer is not naive or stupid. That means having said that, beware that some people are dangerous and they're high and they hide their evil behind their faces with smiles communicating they are wonderful people given the opportunity they will harm you and please abhi gum se don't have faces in your, <laughs> in your minds i'm talking about people con artists for example who pose themselves as being very helpful very generous uh, very out there but they are there to uh, de de uh, deceit, uh, I mean, you know, for deception. They, they want your money and they want to run away with it. So um, as a, a person, you need to be aware of any corruption or fraud. Be very rigorous with all investigation. Now, you are not going to say that, oh, you know, Abhi, this panda wants me to invest 100 million. So I will not have any negative thoughts about this person because behind every person, there is a, a positive intention and people are really not their behaviors. Yes, he does have a history of fraud, but that's we should separate the sin from the sinner. That doesn't apply here. That's an, that's This is an exception. You will not trust a person who has a history of uh, you know harming you in the past or fraud in the past, or hurt in the past, and you're not going to be vulnerable to that person again, right? And uh, and one should test people's sincerity. 
when uh, and trustworthiness before entrusting them with something significant. For example, you are traveling, you want to give your wasiya, your amana to someone. You will first find out, is that person worthy? Is that person known to be uh, trustworthy or honest before you are handing over your precious belongings? For example, you have a daycare center. You will find out whether the people are trustworthy that you can trust your uh, precious child with them. You're just not going to hand over your baby to just anybody uh, who claims to be a caretaker, right? When you hire people, you have to be very vigilant. All these things that we talked about don't apply to these situations where you are just very positive and there should not have any negative thoughts and this doesn't apply. So these are all exceptions uh, to what we, we are talking about. I hope that makes sense and it's clear, right? Any questions so far? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. The, uh, yes. So make people aware of the important facts. Otherwise, they may be a disadvantage. And I was just coming to the example in the case of marriage. God forbid if someone is known to have a disease, uh, someone who is a wife beater, that you have a past experience, or you know someone who is, is known for their aggressive behavior, or for example, all these things, then you will inform the other party that, you know, this is what, uh, and you will first confirm it, that it's a known fact. And when people come to you, you have to just stick to the facts and not blow it out of proportion just to uh, maybe save them from any potential harm in future. Number two, for example, a business deal. People ask you, Ki, you know, is there someone? And if you know something about someone, just to protect their money, their uh, whatever, it's allowed. You can uh, you can inform them if you have had a bad experience. And for example, in court, when you are giving a job, gawahi dete, so you can you have to say the truth, right? So only the pertinent and necessary necessary things need to be said. You don't have to go into random or uh, or details or your own personal ideas or what you think. So now let's talk about strategies to prevent. Now, apart from all these exceptions, now we come to the strategies to prevent and treat these negative feelings. Because we've talked about how dangerous they are, how bad they are, how they impact our system, our physiological state, our biological state, and all, all of that. All of that. Um, so before I come to that, I want to give uh, an exercise to the class and I want everyone, each and every one to do this. Um, I want you to take an A4 size paper and I want to use it as a canvas. You can draw or sketch on it, uh, whatever you want, okay? Uh, because this, this is homework that I will be um, taking back from you before the last class, which is all going to be on the 18th. So you will take an A4 size paper and you are going to draw, sketch, write two or three lines, not an essay type, about the one thing that you, that has changed about yourself for the better and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, during this module, this entire module that you have done. Just a few lines are good. And the purpose of this is to inspire each other because when we see others learn something, we're like, oh, wow, you know, so it impacts you. Other people's experiences, you learn from their experiences. So this has to be a self-evaluation exercise where you evaluate your own behavior. Um, and it's your own personal victory stand. No matter how big it is or no matter how small it is, we're not looking at that. This is just about you and how you have journeyed from where you started this course to where you are now. Right? Um, and there might be many, many milestones or, or goals that you have covered, but I want you to highlight the most eminent one or the one that has impacted you the most or has affected your life the most or something that is most prominent or something that you love most about. But you will not write your name on that A4 size paper on the front, write it at the back. Because inshallah, in the last class, we will, we will, we, I want to display them as a collage to my online students 
and the online students and the on-site students will uh, submit all these papers to their mentors, uh, pictures pictures of them, and then we'll make a collage of them, and then we'll show it to the class, and then we'll pick out um, some of them, and we'll we'll go the oohs and the wows and the subhanallahs on it. Yeah, yeah, it can be anything because, because some, yeah, 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 sure. Some people are very, uh, they are more artistic. They just want to portray how they feel. Some people like to write. So I'm telling you, this is your canvas and it doesn't have to be an essay, just a short line, a few words that this is uh, what changed for you, right? Uh, and we will discuss them in the last class, right? I hope that uh, makes sense. So now we come to the strategies to prevent and treat the negative feelings. Remember that these strategies are not a magic wand, right? These are strategies that you employ, you fail, but there's no such thing as failure. You learn from your, um, you know, your setback, you get up again, and then you do it again and again and again. And practice makes better. You become better and better and better at it. And, in this is, and this class is different than any other class because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your judge. I'm not your judge. There's nobody else judging you. This is you and your own. So it is your, um, it is your niya, it is your effort, it is your struggle, it is your jihad. And this is your um, looking for the pleasure of your Rabb, right? And that is how it will be measured. Because I, as a third party looking at you, might not see any change. Um, people might not notice. But what Allah sees, Allah knows, right? So, uh, inshallah, the, your reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you share it with people, then it helps uh, everyone around us. So, one thing for sure, okay, negative thinking will never make your life positive. Right ever. So this is one thing that we need to engrave, um, that we, we need to treat these negative thoughts and we need to understand the devastating effects on our psyche, the people around, the society, our akhira, the punishments are severe and scary. Um, some of them, they say that riba is even worse than zina. So this is something that we really need to uh, work on. So number one, recall the three rules of neuroscience. I discussed them in the class, last class or class before. Does anyone have them handy? Any online student, can you just uh, type it in quotes, uh, in short words? Does anyone remember them? Behind every behavior, there is a positive. Right. Behind every behavior, there is a positive intention. Separation from the similar. Yeah. Everybody makes the best choice, right? Everybody makes the best choices. And we discussed the, um, the explanation of this, take okay? it? People are not their behaviors. So these are very important to understand when we are talking about negative thinking. Number two, never fuel or help two people split up. When you see people two fighting, one of them comes to you, don't fuel it. Or when you are angry about that third person and then ha, ah, suddenly you see your friend also fighting or having negative feelings. So you know, to take it's your time to take revenge. That's the time for you to rise above your own desires and you try and bring them closer or patch up between them and not follow your own desires, right? For the good of uh, for the good of mankind, obviously for the to do the asan. And this is a uh, a, a negative thing and it is not favored. Number then we have try and focus on the good in others, accept the whole package. This is a basic flaw. When we are, when we get married, so we just want to pick and choose from the spouse. I mean, life would be janna, right? That's never happening. Because people are a package. You can't pick and choose, you can't change people. What you can do is become more resourceful, change things around you, and the trickle effect might affect others. So don't, uh, this, this vicious circle of trying to change others, we as parents want to change our kids, we as 
parents want to, uh, you know, we as spouses want to change our spouses. We as children want to change our parents. We want to change our friends. That's not happening. So we need to accept the package. People make mistakes. Who is perfect? Allah. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. So accept it. The three precepts, the three rules of, I just gave you three rules. Uh, stick to those and understand that people are not perfect. Number then busy yourself with your own faults, right? Busy yourself with your own faults, your own mistakes, your own sins. I am full of my shortcomings to be pointing fingers at any one of you over here. I have my own uh, uh, duties towards Allah. And, uh, and we need to pray to Allah that Allah conceals our faults and pardons us. And we should fear that whoever reveals the faults of others, then as sitir that is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he conceals our sins. Then he will reveal our sins also to others. So we never want to do that. And this is a beautiful uh, hadith from Al-Tirmizi that from the excellence of a person's Islam is that he leaves what does not concern him. This is such a, a, a you know, it's such freedom. Why are we always concerned about what's happening in other people's lives? Leave that which does not concern you. Simple. Busy yourself with yourself. You should not have time to point other people's faults. Now, coming back to what uh, you said, um, maybe we need to do a little more because we before we touch on that case, um, is that whoever believes in Allah and the last day should speak good or remain silent. Now, Zaira, who had phoned me, didn't have to do the class of Tazkiyah. So, what do they do? They didn't do the class of Tazkiyah. So, first of all, duty is to tell them that they will tell them to come and pray or to give them a prayer. Now, I can't go up to your mom and be like, Assalamu alaikum, auntie, I heard that. It's very important for purification of the heart and the soul. I can't start all that, right? So, you have to do that. Number one, this is, I have given you the message. Now, it is your job to spread this goodness to the to the people around you right so number one avoid talking about people who are not present and this is so good i've been trying to do this feeling but also getting up and trying again try not talking about people who are not present in your uh, circle at that time because you do end up saying things it drastically limits the risk of backbiting okay if you see someone change the topic this is the point five strategies. Uh, yes, I did not number them because uh, I did not want to number them because they, they go in every sequence and every order and every way that you can catch on them. So you change the topic. Sometimes, by Khanan wala, ab jase mother hai, ab you tell her, so you will be shut up very badly and you'll be like, listen to me. Yes. So you at least despise it in your heart. You don't... Yeah, and but they let's be honest with ourselves. Sometimes it's a lot of fun. 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 So at least this is our struggle. Ke don't try and enjoy it. Tell yourself, Dekho. I would tell myself, Shaila, this is wrong. This is wrong. I will talk to myself that this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Have, haya, have, uh, you know, uh, you know, thoda karo. Right? So uh, I would have taqwa. And be, uh, you know, embarrassed that Allah is watching. Yes, you can't see my heart how I'm loving this conversation. I pretend, I can pretend very well, but Allah knows. So we need to despise it in our heart or let people know that you are not interested in what they are saying, especially if it's about a friend or someone you know, right? Without seemingly being hostile or being overly righteous. You know, you think you're an angel or whatever. So, and then I did, I did touch on this, that as friends, what you can do is take turns being the police. Like, you know, if someone says, ah, remember today, let's, let's talk about something else. So friends you are close to, one can take over and just keep warning the other that, you know, I think this is because what happens is you start off good 
you start off great and then suddenly you start going after an hour the things go off track things go off track so that's where you need to butt in and you need to say you know what i think we are this year even session should go okay so let's go back you backtrack all right and you save yourself and others from the consequences of the hereafter and uh, and you seek refuge in allah Uh, between and after every gathering subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa atubu ilaik and ye every friend should remember this or one who remembers it should say out loud after every gathering that's going to be a great reminder what are you dekhe na ab ye this is what we need to and humne nek bibi to banna hai kisi ne to banna hai na someone has to right because remember that a person may say a word pleasing to allah not paying any attention to it and that word my my praise is status and some person might say a word displeasing to allah this is very scary this is sahi bukhari 6478 not paying any attention or heed to it for which he will fall into hell so what is the lesson that we learn here the lesson the two go lesson from this hadith yeah You say one word right, say one word left. So lesson kya hai iska? Remain silent. Remain silent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you can't say anything good, yes. What other? What other lesson? Always right. Hmm. Always right. Always right. She always good. Yes. What else? Positive or negative? Balance it out. Wow, you're getting more. I just have one lesson, and I'm. This is great. I'm getting great feedback. What else? Then just positive three days are good. किसके साथ टेप के साथ ओके बट लाइफ आई विल कम टू दैट बट यू नो वी वी कॉन्ट बी सो सीरियस यू हैव टू हैव फन ऑल्सो बट नॉट एट द एक्सपेंस ऑफ अदर्स राइट व्हाट एल्स व्हाट इज द लेसन दैट यू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस अदीस वन वर्ड लेफ्ट वन वर्ड राइट डोंट अंडर एस्टिमेट एनीथिंग एनी गुड डीड और एनी बैड डीड नो मैटर हाउ स्मॉल इट इज never underestimate anything because you don't know where it's ending you right i have another exercise that i will also be completing in the last class please pay attention to what i will say i want you to take a book a little booklet and i want everyone to do this exercise you will in that booklet you will write down all your negative thoughts that you can think about wow that means you have a lot of negative thoughts that screen there write them down if it's too much code them theek hai code them just keep writing them down all your negative thoughts in that little booklet in a way that no one else if someone opens them to the all hell will break loose and uh, just code it code it all your negative thoughts the other section you will write down all the people that you remember that you have back bite it about yeah think about it right maybe if you okay we can make it easier we can make it easier there are, abhi ramzan we've been through ramzan alhamdulillah everyone did their astighfar if you feel you have not done enough astighfar about someone that you have backbited write that down something that is bothering you that aapko hota hai na your heart is heavy about something that you did and you feel that you have not asked for enough forgiveness write that down theek hai and so one is a uh, what did i say the negative thoughts and one is your uh, you, your people you have backbite you will carry this diary everywhere with you for the next two weeks till the last class you are going to bring that booklet to class obviously no one's going to look at it this is between but i want you to have a physical booklet and it shouldn't be anything very expensive or anything that but because we will do something uh, after that okay. yeah you guys are smart you guys are smart so yes no kisi ke code it code it code it all right so i want you to carry it everywhere with you on your bed side in your bag everywhere it's code it code it yes right so code it carry it everywhere please pay attention i want you to carry it everywhere with you for the next two weeks i will come back to it in the next class uh, please carry it with you all right and all the questions inshallah we will answer in the next class all right okay all right all right
Okay. Do we have two assignments? I will put that. All right. Any? I did. So, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.